February 11th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Exodus chapters 25 and 26 from the Old Testament. The Lord spoke to Moses, Tell the Israelites to take an offering for me. From every person motivated by a willing heart, you are to receive my offering. This is the offering you are to accept from them. Gold, silver, bronze, blue, purple, scarlet, fine linen, goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, fine leather, acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for fragrant incense, onyx stones, and other gems to be set in the ephod and in the breastpiece. Let them make for me a sanctuary so that I may live among them. According to all that I am showing you, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, you must make it exactly so. They are to make an ark of acacia wood. Its length is to be three feet, nine inches, its width two feet, three inches, and its height two feet, three inches. You are to overlay it with pure gold, both inside and outside you must overlay it, and you are to make a surrounding border of gold over it. You are to cast four gold rings for it and put them on its four feet with two rings on one side and two rings on the other side. You are to make poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold, and put the poles into the rings at the sides of the ark in order to carry the ark with them. The poles must remain in the rings of the ark. They must not be removed from it. You are to put into the ark the testimony that I will give to you. You are to make an atonement lid of pure gold. Its length is to be 3 feet 9 inches, and its width is to be 2 feet 3 inches. You are to make two cherubim of gold. You are to make them of hammered metal on the two ends of the atonement lid. Make one cherub on one end and one cherub on the other end. From the atonement lid, you are to make the cherubim on the two ends. The cherubim are to be spreading their wings upward, overshadowing the atonement lid with their wings, and the cherubim are to face each other, looking toward the atonement lid. You are to put the atonement lid on top of the ark, and in the ark you are to put the testimony I am giving you. I will meet you there, and from above the atonement lid, from between the two cherubim that are over the ark of the testimony, I will speak with you about all that I will command you for the Israelites. You are to make a table of acacia wood. Its length is to be three feet, its width one foot six inches, and its height two feet three inches. You are to overlay it with pure gold, and you are to make a surrounding border of gold for it. You are to make a surrounding frame for it about three inches broad, and you are to make a surrounding border of gold for its frame. You are to make four rings of gold for it, and attach the rings at the four corners where its four legs are. The rings are to be close to the frame to provide places for the poles to carry the table. You are to make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, so that the table may be carried with them. You are to make its plates, its ladles, its pitchers, and its bowls to be used in pouring out offerings. You are to make them of pure gold. You are to set the bread of the presence on the table before me continually. You are to make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand is to be made of hammered metal. Its base and its shaft, its cups, its buds, and its blossoms are to be from the same piece. Six branches are to extend from the sides of the lampstand. Three branches of the lampstand from one side of it, and three branches of the lampstand from the other side of it. Three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on one branch and three cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms are to be on the next branch, and the same for the six branches extending from the lampstand. On the lampstand there are to be four cups shaped like almond flowers with buds and blossoms, with a bud under the first two branches from it, and a bud under the next two branches from it, and a bud under the third two branches from it, according to the six branches that extend from the lampstand. Their buds and their branches will be one piece, all of it one hammered piece of pure gold. You are to make it seven lamps, and then set its lamps up on it so that it will give light to the area in front of it. Its trimmers and its trays are to be of pure gold. 
About 75 pounds of pure gold is to be used for it and for all these utensils. Now be sure to make them according to the pattern you were shown on the mountain. The tabernacle itself you are to make with ten curtains of fine twisted linen and blue and purple and scarlet. You are to make them with cherubim that are the work of an artistic designer. The length of each curtain is to be 42 feet and the width of each curtain is to be 6 feet, the same size for each of the curtains. Five curtains are to be joined one to another and the other five curtains are to be joined one to another. You are to make loops of blue material along the edge of the end curtain in one set, and in the same way you are to make loops in the outer edge of the end curtain in the second set. You are to make 50 loops on the one curtain, and you are to make 50 loops on the end curtain, which is on the second set, so that the loops are opposite one to another. You are to make 50 gold clasps and join the curtains together with the clasps so that the tabernacle is a unit. You are to make curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. You are to make 11 curtains. The length of each curtain is to be 45 feet and the width of each curtain is to be 6 feet, the same size for the 11 curtains. You are to join 5 curtains by themselves and 6 curtains by themselves you are to double over the sixth curtain at the front of the tent. You are to make 50 loops along the edge of the end curtain in one set and 50 loops along the edge of the curtain that joins the second set. You are to make 50 bronze clasps and put the clasp into the loops and join the tent together so that it is a unit. Now the part that remains of the curtains of the tent, the half curtain that remains will hang over at the back of the tabernacle. The foot and a half on one side and the foot and a half on the other side of what remains in the length of the curtains of the tent will hang over the sides of the tabernacle, on one side and the other side to cover it. You are to make a covering for the tent out of ram skins dyed red and over that a covering of fine leather. You are to make the frames for the tabernacle out of acacia wood as uprights. Each frame is to be 15 feet long and each frame is to be two feet three inches wide with two projections per frame parallel one to another. You are to make all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. So you are to make the frames for the tabernacle 25 frames from the south side and you are to make 40 silver bases to go under the 20 frames, two bases under the first frame for its two projections and likewise two bases under the next frame for its two projections and for the second side of the tabernacle, the north side, 20 frames, and there 40 silver bases, two bases under the first frame and two bases under the next frame. And for the back of the tabernacle on the west, you will make six frames. You are to make two frames for the corners of the tabernacle on the back. At the two corners, they must be doubled at the lower end and finished together at the top in one ring, so it will be for both. So there are to be eight frames and their silver bases, 16 bases, two bases under the first frame and two bases under the next frame. You are to make bars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle and five bars for the frames on the second side of the tabernacle and five bars for the frames on the back of the tabernacle on the west. The middle bar in the center of the frames will reach from end to end. You are to overlay the frames with gold and make their rings of gold to provide places for the bars and you are to overlay the bars with gold. You are to set up the tabernacle according to the plan that you were shown on the mountain. You are to make a special curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and fine twisted linen. It is to be made with cherubim, the work of an artistic designer. You are to hang it with gold hooks on four posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold, set in four silver bases. You are to hang this curtain under the clasp and bring the Ark of the Testimony in there behind the curtain. The curtain will make a division for you between the holy place and the most holy place. You are to put the atonement lid on the Ark of the Testimony in the most holy place. You are to put the table outside the curtain and the lampstand on the south side of the tabernacle opposite the table and you are to place the table on the north side. You are to make a hanging for the entrance of the tent of blue, 
purple, and scarlet yarn and fine twine linen, the work of an embroiderer. You are to make for the hanging five posts of acacia wood and overlay them with gold, and their hooks will be gold, and you are to cast five bronze bases for them. God, there's, there's so much amazingness in the Bible, and this passage is one of them. There's so many pieces of it, and it's so specific. And there's so many pieces that, that link to other things, not only other stories in the Bible, but other things that you've talked about, that you plan on dwelling with your people uh, in this area. Uh, and one of the commentaries that, that I read about this was talking about how this is symbolic of Eden as well, that the tabernacle, tabernacle will be like the Garden of Eden um, where you will dwell. And various details of the tabernacle suggested as a mini Eden. These parallels include the east-facing entrance guarded by cherubim, the gold, the tree of life, the lampstand, and the tree of knowledge, the law. Uh, thus God's dwelling in the tabernacle was a step towards the restoration of paradise, which is to be completed in the new heaven and earth. And I love all of that. And I love all the stories and uh, all the connections to all the other pieces of the Bible. But honestly, God, the part of the story I get is I was that gets my heart the most right now is I was, I was reading all of this and it's a lot of detail. <laughs> and I started thinking, why in the world are you giving them so much detail when you were already showing Moses on the, on exactly how to make these. And this, these instructions wouldn't allow anybody to actually completely make these. So the details you showed Moses aren't included here. So why include so much detail? Um, and of course, there's, there's people who talk about the fact that if you include this much detail, then when they saw these things, they would know what they were. And of course, that makes sense. But I also know that a big part of why the Bible exists is to figure out how it relates to my life and then apply it. And this applies to my life in the sense that sometimes you give me very specific instructions. I want you to go here. I want you to talk to this person. I want it to be about this conversation. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. And in those times where, where you are very specific and very clear, um, and technically it should be easier for me to follow you because you're being so specific, not always. But in those times when you are so specific with me, I feel your presence so much. I always call it that I have a front row seat to watching what you're doing, whether you're being specific with me or in a situation. And it's so incredibly clear that you are close, that you are traveling with me in the tabernacle and speaking to me. <laughs> but there are so many times, God, when you're not specific with me. There's going to be times when you're not specific with Israel. And there's going to be times when I feel like you're not even there. And Israel's going to feel that way. They already have at certain times, feeling like they've been left to die. So today I ask you, God, to help me remember that. It's not you that goes away. It's us that goes away. It's not you who stops being intentional about a relationship with us. It's not you who stops pursuing us. It is us. And in those times where things are quiet, just like in a, in a regular relationship between a friend or a husband or a significant other, even during those quiet times, it doesn't mean that we should suddenly start to doubt them. Just because your wife doesn't call you that whole afternoon or text you that whole afternoon, it's not like you're going to go home and find her gone. <laughs> but yet when we're not getting specific instructions, we're not, when we're not constantly seeing you work in our eye, in our life, suddenly we get this panic feeling like Israel di did throughout this whole story that you're gone, that we've been forsaken, that you've left us alone. Now where we would come up with this nonsense is baffling to me when we don't even do it to our earthly relationships. But I ask you, God, to allow us to remember you have never once forsaken us. You've never once gone away. You have, you have always kept your promises. 
even even listening to these stories, we can see that over and over again. And hopefully by now we've lived enough of a life to see that within our own life. It's everybody else who's who have messed up. So why in the world do we naturally assume that an earthly relationship will always be there for us just because we don't hear from a person for a couple hours or a couple days? But why do we think that you've gone away from us and we suddenly are scrambling with quicksand underneath our feet? I, I don't have the answer. It's just part of the prayer that I have for you, God, that I ask that you help me work on that today. That at those times when, and you know that I'm struggling with this right now, and those times where it's in full obedience that I'm doing something that you've asked me to do, and yet things are still taken away from me, I don't hear from you, all these things, and, and I naturally go to a place that isn't a healthy relationship. I naturally go to a place of fear and, and concern and anger and frustration and jealousy and all of these emotions that aren't from you, God. So today I want to work on that. It's very important to me that you are the most important relationship in my life. And it should also honestly be the easiest one because you are never going to do to us what everybody else does to us. You're never going to lie to us. You're never going to leave us. You're never going to not forgive us. You're never going to hold a grudge against us. You're never going to be late. <laughs> it's always going to be your perfect timing. You're never going to be mean to us. You love us with a love that we can't even understand. And so... As far as relationships go, this should be the easy one for us. To love somebody who is consistent, who loves us unconditionally, who is not going anywhere, who we have nothing to fear about losing this relationship. And yet, God, for all of us, this is the hardest relationship. It's the hardest one to keep first and foremost in our hearts and our minds and our daily actions. I ask today that we put you first, that you're first before all of these other relationships, because without you, these other relationships aren't going to exist. They're not going to be successful. That without you, my day in and day out life is not going to work, not the way it's supposed to. And without you, I can't be everything I was created to be. It is only with you and having a relationship with you that I get to grow into this child of God that you created. That all the gifts you gave me begin to flourish and grow in this relationship, just like they would in a healthy relationship here on earth. God, today, help me to put you first before any other relationship, before anything else in my life, before anything I want. That even if I'm not hearing specific details like go one feet, three inches this way, Janelle. That I will still remember that you're in control. That you love me. And that you're not going anywhere. No matter how lost I get. In your son's name we pray. Amen.